best starting formation in FIFA 23. Let's run it. Beautiful, beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Please do me a solid in the comment section. Best and worst players you've used thus far. I got something cooked. Goalkeeper, Simon. I should mention, this squad is about to be affordable. You can remake and replicate. I already know it's gonna get busy. Center back, numero uno, Jimenez. Been around the block for a good minute. Dribbling could be better, transparently. Next to this gentleman or this veteran. We have one of my favorite center backs in FIFA and when he gets any inform or promo, Kunde is going to shut down the party. Headband all day every day side to side movement unrelated the entire team is first owner this is an rtg two things if you want more gameplay twitch at mike labelle secondly if you don't have a copy of fifa 23 i still got a giveaway going down on twitter at yours truly full back i'm gonna take a gamble cunha i like him we're not talking matata but i don't know that he's positioned that well to be a fullback. He'd be one of those guys that you want to play the center mid, a holding mid, a box-to-box -box midfielder, and he's built well for that. Right back, taking a gamble. Not my typical cup of tea, but I wanted to give Jesus, Jesus Navas, a little bit of some playtime. A lot of pace. Again, high passing, high dribbling if the skill moves. I just hate his body type and physical nature. Always have. Central midfielders. Woo! Paul. Still sounds like a church. Another one of those overpowered mids. Not very expensive either. A lot of green statistics. Four star skill move. Let the man wiggle. Let the man work. This far in FIFA 23, left stick dribbling's kind of been dodgy. So I'll take high figures. Pack pulled again. Untradeable. Pedri. Got some hype around this young Spaniard. And for good reason. I'm telling you that high caliber dribbling. It makes the pace feel better. The turning feel better. It's as if you got the four-wheel drive. You rev that up. Wings, what we doing? How we talking? How we living? Dan Juma. Might actually end up playing him up front. He's always one of those under-the-radar, overpowered, cheap, discount shopping guys that you can grab off the marketplace. And in this case, these stats, look like they're going to deliver with a five-star rate. Four-star skills, four-star weak foot. Other side of the pitch, we're going to call this the Jesus zone. We got Jesus and Jesus. This man is so special to me. Last year, phenomenal. This year, having that five plus five, he's going to surprise some folks. Calling it early, and there's some versatility. And a theme that you will see me discuss is that high dribbling. Up front, what are we doing? I wanted to bring out the sweat demon himself. Not that he'd want to have that part of his rebound brand but in yaki williams 94 pace i don't think he has the lengthy steps but in some ways you still have similarities to the likes of a holland does have the skills weak foot concern the physical numbers are way up if you play direct someone like in yaki williams a real issue a problem trendsetter and then next to mr williams i've decided to include the cunha this is going to be another one of those players that people don't discuss enough until you actually use them. I've already put him into motion separately. He feels clean, crisp, very Brazilian. If it wasn't clear, I'm talking four, four, two. The classics and a spectacular place to begin your FIFA journey. You might ask yourself, Mike, what about the tactics? I need custom tactics. Well, if you're new around these parts, I've collaborated with a good friend of mine, Ovi. That video is live up on his YouTube channel. And it's linked down below. Let's get into the gameplay. As we get started with the pro, you should be subscribed. And for me, it starts out in the 442. It's an intuitive formation. It feels natural, it feels organic. You've seen it before, you're familiar. There's a certain level of regularity with the 442 and how it aligns, how players prosper, how they protect, how they go forward, the shape of the formation. It's been consistent and reliable every single FIFA installment. Some years it's more overpowered or pushes into the meta better than others. But overall, the 442 is a staple formation and it's something that I can appreciate. It's a big reason that I say it's a great starting formation, if not the best starting formation, is because it allows you time to learn the game and you're not doing rocket science. This is FIFA 101. You also have width. And with that width, you have crossing. And in FIFA 23, crossing is serious business. I am switching the pitch. I'm looking for outlets. And you can hit all sorts of different crosses. I might put out a tutorial, whether you're going back post, you're whipping it on the early cross, you're taking it down off the chest. I've seen different inclusions of flick-ons. You've seen the Travella cross, potentially, where you have unrealistic accuracy. Just aspects that wouldn't 
always fit into the FIFA ecosystem. And they have came in, at least before this initial patch that we all know is coming, as extremely overpowered. It's almost like a radar, the way you're able to push that into the box, pick out targets, oncoming. Counterattacks, I find them to be very viable. This formation, depending on your tactical setup, can be much more defensive, it can be balanced, or it can be extremely attacking. I love to have versatility and variety. You have two strikers, which allows you to incorporate them to play striker to striker through balls or one twos, or again, one can go deep, one can check into space. You have those crossing options. It's just another viable way to score goals with regularity while still being able to mix it up. I'm gonna hammer that home. Maybe the last portion of the pros is through balls, through balls, through balls. And whether it is your left mid and your right mid and they're overlapping, or it's between those strikers, there's a lot of options going forward for direct play which again becomes a major benefit this allows you to play differently it allows you to have new forms of expression as you're going forward and then again you're catering to the classic fifa player whether you started your quest 10 years back and you took a few years off in between till getting to this point this formation will still feel as if it's something you're accustomed to as for the cons we have to talk negatives in the 442 FIFA 23, it can look flat. And when I say flat, what I mean is that you don't have players that seem layered. If you have a bad giveaway, those center mids maybe aren't supporting, they were already starting their run, and you end up in a position where you're open for business. The counterattack can be available, or you just don't feel as if you have as much defensive support because they're not sitting in triangles. The spacing doesn't look like this. The shape isn't necessarily going down that pathway, and it's specifically on the defensive end. Which leads me to the second major con, transition transition coverage, maybe just transition defense in general. You don't have, again, that classic holding mid. You could play a different variation of this formation. You could switch between formations to try to help eliminate in this portion or this function on the virtual pitch. But I, I still find it to be an issue, especially over the long term. I'm ready to change formations once I get a substantial lead. Let's say I'm up two or three goals. I'm coming out of the 4-4-2 just because I want to set up shop with something that I feel is a little more consistent, a little more reliable. Squad review. Remember, let me know in the comments your best and worst player experiences thus far. Major takeaways defensively. I know Koundé is mad expensive. I understand. He is viable, a unique center back, and he feels better than a large portion of center backs that I've used up to this point. And his price should come down. Throwing it out there as the year goes on. I hinted at this earlier, but Acuna, I would still prefer to be in some center mid role. You just get more out of the passing, and it is noticeable. Even his delivery out of the back, he could pinpoint dime dropping, one man counter attack, outlet passes, big switches, especially if you're going up against a high press or a team press. There's value in that. But he does not have the burner. Dan Juma might have been the MVP. We were scoring for fun. Kind of predicted this heading into the gameplay portion. Played him up front as well. Should mention he was a striker at all times for yours truly. Pedri got quick feet. That's the review. Certain confidence with the second Jesus. And I might have a bias. This man has always spoke to me. And Yaki is not going to live on. I'm just tossing it out there. He's got too many limitations when it comes to not having the footwork or the passing for long-term, overpowered, disgusting, filthy nature. But as a super sub, it could happen. Cunha, I liked. Just throwing it out there. If you want to try out something that costs next to nothing, thumbs up. Just to recap, and I need a better looking notepad. That is undeniable. For the tactics and those pieces of information, Obi's channel, link down below. And as for the pros, it's an intuitive formation. You're familiar. I like the width. I like the crossing, the lengthy player development, the counterattacks, the through balls, the two strikers. You name it, it's there. I'm just going to keep padding the notepad now on the cons defensively plenty of you are going to have some issues just looking a little bit too flat encounters the door is open that wraps it up let me know what you think in the comment section if you have formations that you want to see reviewed and discussed now i have a lot more content coming out asap asap there should be another video right here